Hi, welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. This week, we're in Montana. We're at the Parade Rest Guest Ranch, and we're gonna fish some small streams. Joining me today is Mr. Bob Jacklin of Bob Jacklin's Fly Shop in West Yellowstone, Montana, and he's gonna show us exactly what we need to do to take these fish. It's gonna be a fun day, so sit back in that nice easy chair of yours, and we'll be back in a minute. That was awesome. They're extremely strong fish. There you go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish, good fish. Yeah. Got him. Yeah, oh, well reckoned. We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got a perfect example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very sweet flat. Sweet music, sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to scientific anglers, makers of Mastery Series fly lines, Sage Performance Fly Rods, Loon Outdoor Products, Fishing with a Conscience. On today's show we're fly fishing one of the numerous small streams in the West Yellowstone area. This picturesque town is known for its friendly people, wonderful fly shops, and very reasonably priced accommodations. West Yellowstone also has the bragging rights of being very close to such famous rivers as the Madison, Henry's Forks, the Gallatin, and Slough Creek. Joining me today is legendary FFF Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Bob Jacklin. Bob is the longest standing outfitter and guide in West Yellowstone, and has owned a shop and guide service for 30 years now, and has been guiding out here since 1969. A passionate fly fisher who, by the way, still ties his own flies, is going to share some of his vast knowledge and experience fly fishing trout streams. The techniques he will share with us can be used on any other trout stream. We cross the stream and Bob talks about the importance of where you position yourself in regards to the sun. Now what we did is we, of course we upset the pool by crossing it, but we changed the equation. The sun's in our favor, we're on the right side of the river, we're fishing upstream, and what I think we, sh we should do is catch that, this side of that riffle. Okay. Let's walk up about feet, and I'll let you start, All right. and uh, we'll see how we do. Bill, why don't you uh, start right here, and obviously you can, that white rock out there, but fish right on up, casting upstream, typical upstream? dry fly matter. Okay. Yeah, just straight up river. Yeah. Just a little bit of work. When dealing with fast currents, one of the most effective casts used in obtaining a drag-free drift is the reach cast. Simply when presenting the fly, reach to the left or right depending on the current and allow a small amount of line to pass through the guides of the rod. This will position the line in such a way that the fly line will float at the same speed as the water giving you a drag-free drift. Whoa, Whoa, that was a strike. All right, a little strike there. <laughs> All right, we know they're in there now. Because this is a small stream, a little mountain stream, it doesn't have a lot of big fish. So these fish are gonna be small on an average, maybe even six to 10 inches. But that one because, looked pretty good. That, one, yeah, that was a little nicer. But because the stream flows into a large impoundment like Hebgen Lake, a 20 inch fish is, I wouldn't say real common, but not Unusual not unheard to get of, here, not. yeah, not unheard of at all. You can take some big fish because they move through here. That's nice. And a good drag free drift there. Yep. There we Ooh, go. Fish there we on. go. Got a fish. There nice. we go. Good deal. Now, right, I was so. talking. Oh, look at him jump. This this is quite quite nice. And he's given himself a good account of himself. Very, yeah, nice very nice. little fish. Now these are all wild fish, aren't they? Yes, they are. We don't stock here in Montana. This is wild fish. Looks like a wild rainbow from first look. Yep. That's yep, what it is. Yep, it's a nice little wild rainbow. Okay. Nice fish. Now, we're gonna let him go. Just quick shot there. Very nice. Very nice. That was exciting, nice. Bob. That good was exciting. Little fish. Yep. Now, you made a believer out of me. All right. As far as the size of the flies. Yep. Because compared to back east, these are quite large. 
Yep. But the fish actually, he took that quite aggressively. And you know, it took us several casts to get to when that float was just right, then exactly. he took it, not yes. every cast. That's right, and you it's know? important. Uh, what I did was I tried to, I gave the rod a shock, and what that did was point my fly downstream first. Yes. My fly my fly line was above the fly, which allowed me a longer drag free drift. That's the whole key. Yeah, just yeah. shock the rod at the end. It goes it goes to the left on you. We call that, or George Harvey calls it, checking the cast. Checking the which cast. Which I think is a perfect term. Yeah, yeah. Great. Great, that was wonderful. Now, Bob, you're telling me that this is a good spot. Now, why would this be a good spot? Well, you've got a bend in the river against this heavy bank and okay. those big boulders, and then you've got a nice, nice big, real heavy riffle here, which is really too fast. But on that seam, and then, of course, along that bank, along them big boulders, you've got a foot to three foot of holding water, mm -hmm. so those fish have cover, have feed, have everything they want. They're going to be right on that crease. So, so I would get we're in not going to be in this heavy water. We're going to be gonna, over here. Yeah. So we're going to fish down like we did in the last pool. Okay. So by the time the line catches up to that leader, that fly is drag free for at least a couple seconds anyway. Okay. That's well, then that's well, let's cool try it, Phil. We'll get right up here and fish down okay. into that. And aim down this way and pull back. Dang, we'll down catch right that there. tail end. We're not way down, but a little bit. Yeah, pull way back. There you go. Let's see. Be ready. Hook them. Got them. Ah. Another First fish. Oh, 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 gone. That was great. They were right where they should be. Yes. That looked like a brown to me, but yeah, that looked back. a little darker. A little darker. Pull way back so you get a nice float. All right. Be ready. Come on, baby. Did you see oh, that I one? I seen rise? that. Yeah, okay. There's one rose on the inside there. I seen them. All right. Small fish, but maybe we can get them perfect. Let it pull. Oh, missed him. That was a nice him. fish. That was a good fish. Yeah. Yep. Maybe. He's right yeah, on I that don't rock. think he tasted it. There we go. There you are. Right there. This is a nice stream because of the ranch here, the Parade Rest Ranch. People that stay at the ranch can come out in the evening and spend an hour or two right at, oh, that's right, right oh, on yeah. there, right where that one rose earlier, right there, right there. They can spend an hour or two at dark, catch the evening hatch. You know, mostly small fish, but a lot of action. You know what I, what I really like about it? This is very easy waiting. Oh, yeah. You very easy walking. We really could get away with hip boots here. We wore yeah, our could, chest yeah. waders, but... I brought a pair of hip boots with me because that's all you really need. Let her go. See how that cast checked? Yeah, checked and, and come yeah. back and laid down oh, nice. Perfect. And I'm getting a great drift out of it. Yep. Remember, we're casting over this fast water too, so it's tough to do. What you said before, Bill, being in this heavy water like this is, is hiding our presence from those traps. Yes, the, the noise is they really helping us. They don't us. know we're here. They don't oh, know we're here. Good. Yeah. That's in our favor. Again, you still don't you still don't want to crunch a lot of, of rocks or make a lot of noise. That's but right. Make we're, it easy. We're a little bit better here. Look him. Whoop, there he is. Oh. oh boy, that's a little one. <laughs> Let's let him go right away. Yeah, yeah, Whip make my sure hand. that we're not hurt. Notice the par marks on this fish. Little par marks. That's a wild little fish. There he goes. Little Very rainbow. Good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. They're small, but I never hey, met a fish I didn't like. Me neither. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, Comparadon like Kuzi and Nastasi uh, did. But this is a haystack. Uh, similar to that, I tie mine with a little hackle tail, but mm -hmm. it's a pale morning done. We put some nice doe deer hair on it, just a haystack style or Comparadon style. Light body. And uh, a pale morning done is still one of your really... Uh, present mayflies in all these waters out mm -hmm. west here. Now what size is this? That's a 14, that's a pretty good pretty, size. Pretty big size, That's yes, a pretty yeah, big size, yeah. but you know, fish out here are used to taking a big fly, mm -hmm. and they seem obviously, to be taking yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah taking obviously. it today, and we can yeah, they, see uh, it. Yeah, they, they really, really were chomping on that. We might do a little better if we had a smaller fly, but we could see it, and it's fun fishing. Yeah, that's And they're sure. taking it. Yeah, they're taking it, lots of excitement. Well, let, there's one big, bigger, larger fish <laughs> left. Let's see if we can get him. Okay. What we got here, Bill, is a is what I call a para spin, but it's a spinner. It's a rusty spinner. I don't see any spinners out this morning, but trout really like these spinners. Yeah, they, they seem to like that. So, um, since it's my turn, I'm going to walk up here and hit that water just a little further a little than further. where you cast. Okay. Maybe that's, there's that's, one in there for me. I'll stay beside I'll wait you. I'll out here a little bit. Show me how it's done, Bob. You sort of stopped it hard up top, right? Yes. I stopped high and bounced it back or shocked yeah. it back. And the foot... There Got we him. go. And that, All right. that is absolutely spectacular. That's a little nicer fish. And that's a pretty good fish, yes. Yeah, a little better. Really giving himself a good 
Down showing, there. isn't it? Well, it's, you know, but hey, every fish is nice. Here we go. And we just let them go right away. The markings are quite... Yeah, quite those, those par markings par on margin. the fish. So that's they just the baby. Those. Yeah, they that's lose the baby. those. Yeah. They lose those. They lose those. Yeah. Would that trout move down downstream to the lake to grow, or would they stay here? They'll, they'll work their way down as they grow, and once they hit the lake, they'll be a little larger, and then okay. they'll come back as adults. Okay. Similar to salmon, really. Yes. I'm going to yes. make a cast where we rose that bigger one before, okay. and I'm going to bounce it way. I call it bouncing it, but shocking it way back. To okay. Get a little more float. Yeah. In there. Oh, I see that. And you dropped the line. I was yes. keeping my line too high. That's what it was. You're you aiming low. I aim high and then bounce yeah, and then it way back. It. Yes. And oh, yeah. And look at the nice grass re It out. lands with a lot more slack. Yeah. We took that spinner, that power spin fly. Now, the problem with this method of fishing is you end up with too much slack. Too much slack, and it's hard to set the hook. Sure. Sometimes you miss the fish. Yeah. But you bring them up. You get the strike. Absolutely. So, the excitement was there. Oh, yep. one just... Flash Did you see underneath that? it. I see a flash, yeah. All right. Let's try that again. Way up high and bounce it back. Oh yeah. Missed oh, him. he come right <laughs> out of the water. <laughs> Missed him. Boy, they are aggressive, aren't they? Well you notice how these fish take that fly when there's no no slack, uh, yeah. no drag on no it. No drag, yeah. They Boom. really know it's real. Now see that flash a little bit of drag. That's bad. But That's bad. What no. can you do? There you go. You no got, you're fighting a lot of currents. But if you get a one or two foot drag free grip, and then like that, just yep. like that. They'll take it. They'll take it, yeah. Now we have a little hatch out there, and they look like tricos to me. Yeah. So, But they're taking the larger fly. They're taking the larger fly. Well, it's a better meal. Absolutely. You know. Steak over it. hamburger. Exactly. We're going to do this check cast is what Joe Humphreys calls it, and George Harvey, checking the cast. I called it the bounce cast for many years, but I really do is check the cast. I stop the rod and then bounce it back or shock it back. And when I do that, I drop my elbow, shock it back and drop it. So the whole fly line drops down, I missed one, just like that. It's called checking the cast. I like that term. I'm getting a couple little strikes. But when you check the cast, You've got a lot of slack, and you get a perfect float every time. And that Mr. was a fish. Wonderful. The fish. <laughs> Another, Another fish. fish. Oh, man. Those are decent fish, too. You know, a lot of times, a lot of fishermen will change flies all the time, and it really isn't the fly, it's the technique. You get that oh, right you just had a rise just as you pick it up. You get that right check on the cast, so it floats natural. Mm -hmm. It's the presentation. That's presentation. the important thing. I'm a big believer that's the most important of all. More important than the right fly. Yep. Whoop. Yeah, you just had another. I had another Man, there's one a lot right of there. fish in there, isn't there? Yep. Bill, look at the par markings on that fish. Beautiful. That's, yeah. that's, that's camouflage for yes. a young fish. Let's we'll take the hook out. It's a barbless hook. And we'll let them Very go nice. right away. Very nice. Uh, they're exciting. Uh, you don't have to catch big fish. This, to me, is extremely exciting. Visual, the fish are coming up. Oh, yeah. This is just wonderful. It's yeah, a great I love pool it. Here. I love it, yeah. This and, the... and we might bonus with a big fish. That'll and be that'll be a bonus. That's but right. I'm enjoying myself immensely right now. And I'm looking at a nice piece of water, and it's got sort of a cut bank on it and a nice heavy riffle coming down or a good run. I look at that water and concentrate on it, this time of year especially with a hopper, that first six inches to 12 inches from the bank. It's almost like it moves slower than midstream and it does move slower. So I try to get that fly in there so it moves at the rate of speed that that water moves at, not the rate of speed of the fast moving stream. And those fish are holding in there. Plus the fact that that's a window. And if they're in that water for cover and they can look right up and see that fly and up they go. And he didn't that's a nice little bit of rainbow there. Nice rainbow. That's nice rainbow. Yeah, there very he goes. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. You know, a guy tends to take a fly that he's comfortable with and, and works well all the time. And out here we have a fair amount of uh, pale morning duns or PMDs, the guys call them. And they're about a size 16. Sometimes you'll get a few 14s. 
So this water here, I just went with a pale mooring done this morning, and I actually saw two of them fly since we put them on. But I put it on, I didn't know what to put on, I figured let's try that, that worked. We could have went to a little spinner of some sort. I saw a flying ant today already. We could have went to that. This is the time of year for that. But um, that fly floats well. I use that Comparadun style, floats high. We could see it, did the trick. Well, years ago when I was uh, going in the Army, I was a kid and graduated high school and I uh, went in the Army. I got very lucky. I got a good job in the Army. I was a musician, so I got to play in a band. But, and it was tough to get in, but I made it. But anyway, I enjoyed it. And I read an article about a man took his son fishing in the Grand Loop of Yellowstone. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm a fly tire, I fish, I love it, so whole, my whole life. I ought to save my money when I get out of the Army three years from now, I should take myself on a trip to Yellowstone. And I saved my money for three years. I had a brand new car, it was a Volkswagen, but it was a brand new car. And I drove from New Jersey all the way to West Yellowstone. And I didn't know there was a West Yellowstone. I stopped at Madison Junction, fished around, got friendly with an older guy fishing there, and he said, you know, son, there's a town 14 miles away. So I got acquainted with Bud Lilly, Pat Barnes, and Jim Danskin, and all the experts in West Yellowstone, and got to know them. And I spent about a month here. And really, uh, after about two years of coming here in the summers a little bit, I got asked by Bud Lilly to be a guide, so I started guiding. And that's how my love for this area comes. And, Pretty much we've got the best, I think, the best uh, trout fishing in the lower 48 states. We've got 20 miles over into Idaho. We've got Yellowstone Park, as you can see right behind me is all Yellowstone Park about a mile away. And then to the south, we've got the snake drainage. To the north is the Madison, the Gallatin. We've got it all here. So within a, within a 50 mile or even a 100 mile radius, we've got the finest fly fishing and trout fishery in the lower 48. So this is the place for somebody that likes to fly fish and you can learn. The fish are not easy. The other thing we're very proud of in the state of Montana is we don't stock fish. We stock them in lakes and occasionally we'll supplement some rivers, but this area here is all wild. Every fish we caught today, every fish we see in this whole region has been born in the stream, and we're all proud of that. And in some cases, they're pretty nice sized fish. They're not easy to catch. So a lot of people come out here to, for the first time have the idea they're gonna just gets lots of fish one after the other. And sometimes you can when they're rising on a good hatch, but most of the time you gotta work for them. They're rising fish and that's where the fun comes in. Getting the right fly, the right technique, put it all together and there's a big fish. Due to the numerous changes in wind, a rod of eight and a half to nine feet and in the four to five weight range are needed. Floating lines with leaders in the 10 foot or longer area is also necessary due to the clarity of the water. A small stream like this, we're lucky we could have fished it with hip boots. We're wearing our waders, but it's fairly shallow. We can cross it at will almost, but there's a few good spots. You want to always approach the stream from the shallow side. So this means wading back and forth, maybe a dozen times like we did today, back and forth with everything, with the camera and trying to get everything set up. So we're always approaching fish from the shallow side. The fish are not likely to be in that shallow water, they're likely to be in the deeper water. We could be wrong. The fish always seem to be on the other side of the river. When we're on this side, they're on that side. But we do that purposely to approach from the shallow side. One of the biggest mistakes I found over the years of guiding people with dry fly fishing is that we'll be wading a section of the river, or even floating, and someone will spot a fish, or I spot a fish and put a client on it, there's a fish. Right away, he wants to cast to that fish. My rule is don't cast, think about it. Are you better walking upstream and approaching that fish or down or across? Where's the best spot to cast from? We're here, the fish is there. That doesn't mean we have to lay a fly right on them. Maybe it takes a minute to think, oh, I might be better off 10 feet above. I get a little better float right into that fish. So that's important. When you see a fish rise, don't necessarily cast to them right away. And the other thing I do is I let them rise again. Hopefully he'll rise again if he's feeding. And then I know just where I want to lay my fly and try to feed that fly into the fish's window right into his mouth. I try to do that. I can't always do it, but we try. Maybe, you know, get the fly to go right down the center, for, you know, wherever you think. I did see one rise, but it was a small fish. Whatever you think. Checking the cast right there where the fly is, where the rise was. Got to check it a lot there, that's for sure. Nice. Hook him. There you go. <laughs> All right, you got oh, him. Nice. You got him. Hey, let's see what he is. He might be a wild cutthroat. Oh, and he let go. He let go. All right, get oh. another one. Hey, that was we exciting. Got a little action. Little action, yeah. But this, this is definitely 
a, a productive hole, it looks like to me. Egg, better fish. Egg. Better fish. That's a better fish. Yeah. Nice. Let's see what he Two is. Two casts in a row. All right. I'll get up here with you and get him in. I won't even use the net. We'll just okay. take, take a look. But it, it looks might like be a, a decent fish. Throat. Yeah, that's, uh, they're getting bigger. That's decent a nice fish. fish. Wait a second. He's not ready yet, right. I don't think. We can this net him. This is actually so a pretty good fish, yeah. Yeah, let's net him. Let's then net we can him. see what he is. Bring him on in here. We'll get him right on top. Got him. This is what we call a cut bow. Look at this. The fish has got that slash underneath yeah. his malaxin, uh, yeah, an axillary. Right See that? And he's still got some par marks on him. Very nice That's fish. That's a nice 12 inch fish. Nothing wrong with that fish. Nothing wrong with That's that. That's a nice yeah. fish. Get another one out uh, of there, Bill. <laughs> That's a nice fish. That was, that was exciting. And right where you said he was. That's that was it. Fish. Right at the very end. If you see the, how the, the, the current comes and meets at a point, he was right at the very end there. On Bob's suggestion, we moved to a spot further downstream where he said the fishing was good the previous day. The sun's just coming out. I can see why they had Right there. in there, Bill, we had, our, we had some action. I had an 80-year-old man here about... Oh, and there was our fish. fish. Nice good fish. Going, Bill. Oh, oh, he let go. Very good. All right. Can you call him or what? <laughs> First cast. My goodness. <laughs> oh, right can you there. call him? That's great. I, oh, I just landed him in here. It's a nice fish. Maybe we can get a look at it. Yeah, let's have a look at him there. What did it, you do to get him? I fished downstream right under that other cut bank. That undercut bank, And there, I eh? kept working down. I didn't fish up there at all. This is the first place I started. Mm -hmm. Didn't get anything. About 10 casts, and finally the last cast, he took it. See if we can get him here before he let him go. See the big slash under him? Kind of pink, yep. see it? Yep. That's a pretty fish. Let's let him go right in there. Thanks to Bob for being on the show. Oh, thank you it's so been much. Great. I've learned a lot of you. I had a good time. I've learned a lot of you. We had a good time here. This for is more great. information on today's show and other shows we have, visit us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. On behalf of all of us at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for being with us. Tight lines. We'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher is made possible thanks to the Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine, Scientific Anglers, Mastering the sport with science. Islander Precision Reels.